You are in the right place if you've ever felt burnt out, unmotivated, uninspired by social media. So the pressure to post more content has led to this very predictable cycle where essentially you have this burst of creativity and motivation. You're starting to post consistently, maybe for a few weeks, maybe for a month. And then all of it just becomes overwhelming. Then you burn out, you stop posting altogether. Together, and it gets pretty hard to get back to square one of just even posting anything again. If this sounds familiar, you are not alone. As a retired social media manager, I have 110% experienced this myself, not only posting for clients, but posting for my own accounts. And along the way of burning out a few times, I have found a few things that have really helped me ditch this burnout cycle for good with a sustainable strategy being at the focus of the solutions I'm sharing. First, I think it's important for us to tackle creativity versus motivation because these can be some of the first things we lose when we are burnt out on social media. But it's really important to understand with the video content creation process, these are separate things. They help each other, but they are separate. And so creativity is really how you generate new content, new ideas, new ways of showing up. And so the solution of, if you're just like not feeling creative, you probably need to experiment more. Maybe you've gone into the habit of posting things that are familiar, posting things that are maybe a little out of date, and you just need to experiment and test new things. I really recommend creating some space in your daily routine for just play and having a little bit more fun with your content, it's really hard to be creative if you really don't have time to actually create things and you're always rushing to batch or think up a new content idea. You're like literally staring at the Reels editor trying to post. So give yourself some space, whether it's scheduling a content day dedicated to creating content or just a time slot in your morning or your evening where you can dedicate to just being creative and creating that content. Motivation is the other side of the coin, which is essentially having the actual desire to want to do the creative things. And it's really important that we create the expectations that you will not always be motivated to show up in your video content. In fact, that is going to be a constant ebb and flow. And that is why it's really important to get into the habit of creating a system around storing your content ideas and actually creating content. I don't necessarily believe in writer's block, but I do believe in having these creative bursts, having these moments of inspiration. I know I just got off a speaking engagement and I said something that I was like, that was a really cool analogy and way of saying something. So I quite literally stored it away for when I wasn't inspired. And then when I didn't have things to kind of lean on for inspiration. So not only having a place to put your content ideas, but also having a strategy to rely on, like having content pillars, having a clear goal, a clear posting plan, a clear ideal follower of who you're actually posting for, because you can lean on those as your foundation for when you literally are unmotivated and you could not be bothered. You have all of those things to lean on so you can still show up and be consistent. And if we're being realistic, it is not realistic at all to be motivated and creative at the same time or or when you need it especially when it comes to being burnt out, whether it's emotionally, physically, is this can really lead to not showing up all together. And so I want to kind of identify a few of the reasons why you might be burnt out when it comes to how you're showing up in your video content. The first, being annoyed with apps like Instagram. And I know this might sound silly, but the energy we spend hating, despising and app that we use for free to grow our businesses is taking away from the motivation, energy, and desire to actually show up on that social media app. 
And like, if we're being honest, social media is really not that serious. It is just a small part of how we market our brands. It's just a small part of our business, our day, our life. So when we put it in its place, we realize that it shouldn't be taking up all this capacity and energy of like hating it and ranting about it and complaining about new features or glitches or whatever. I see this all the time where people literally go on their stories and they're complaining about about Instagram and like your community can feel that. Why are they going to want to engage? So probably a lot of the reasons why maybe you're feeling unmotivated, like having low engagement or whatever is probably because we need to get your attitude right. The other reason why you might be burnt out is not having the right systems in place. And it's really important for you to understand that systems isn't a tool like Asana, ClickUp, Airtable, whatever that is. It is a process, a workflow for helping you actually create your content. And yes, do you want to get to a place where you get an idea, you sit down, you create on your phone and you're kind of in this flow state when it comes to how you're showing up on your social media? Absolutely. I do that often. But this took years of sticking to my system and workflow. And that is what I lean on when I do not have the time and capacity to like play on my phone. Because even as an Instagram person, I don't have time in my day to just play on my phone and post when I feel like it. And so here's a few things that you want to think about when systemizing how you're creating content on social media. The first is having a place to actually store your content ideas. So a doc, a notebook, a note on your notes app, your favorite project management tool, a content calendar. Find a place for when you get an idea in that creative state, you put that idea somewhere. So when you have the footage or when you have the time to batch or when you're sitting down to create content, you have a bank of content to pull from, from when you're at your most creative. And this also just means getting into the habit of storing those ideas when you get them. So when I was speaking at the event, I'm storing ideas. When I'm coaching my clients, I'm storing ideas. When I'm on a hot girl walk, listening to a business podcast, I'm storing ideas. When I'm listening to what my community is saying, what's resonating with them, I store that in my idea bank. So you almost will have the problem of having too many content ideas, which is the problem that we want to have. This also means in your system, you want to break down your workflow. So often what I see is people say, I'm going to sit down and create content. And creating content actually means a lot of little micro tasks like ideation, outlining what the content is even going to be about, writing a caption, filming the footage, editing the footage, designing the graphic, actually posting and publishing it, right? There's this workflow that all of us have for every piece that goes into just posting something as simple as a reel. So it's important in your system to have a place for each part of that workflow to live because this will allow when you're setting aside the time to create content, you're not overwhelming yourself with the task of batching a bunch of reels. You're focusing on batching reels footage or batching reels ideas. And the most important part about the system is you actually have to set aside the time to do it. I had this one client who was really struggling and she genuinely felt like everyone had more time than she did. And I asked her, I'm like, well, when are you creating your content? And she said, well, it's on Sunday evenings when I'd rather be with my my family. And it's like the only time outside of my business hours that I have time to create content. And that's when I realized that was the problem for her specifically of like content creation was on the back burner and she wasn't treating it like the very important marketing task that it is. And so I really encourage you to set aside a day every month, a day every week, whatever that looks like for you. I know sometimes we're side hustlers or we have families and you might have limited time, but even if that's an hour or two hours that you can dedicate towards your content, towards your workflow, towards the system you have set up for you, you will not get in this burnout cycle of doing the content things when you don't want to be doing it. Like I want to be spending my weekend with my family, relaxing and not worrying about batching content for the next week. So you really want to set yourself up for success so you don't burn out again with systems. 
And the last reason I see people burnt out on social media is just simply not having a strategy, posting just a post, or even worse, just trying anything you're hearing you should be doing, any hacks, any tricks, and whatever's working for everyone else, and not actually having a custom plan and strategy for you. And this is something that I dedicate an entire module to inside my signature video confidence program, because we cannot get to the video. We cannot get to the content if we don't have that foundation and actually create a strategy that's rooted in the goals that you have for your business. Because whatever's working for me might not work for you. And you need to create a plan that's actually going to get you closer to your goals and not veer you off to different paths. And a few of these things that you want to include in your strategy that will prevent this burnout is actually having a posting plan. So knowing how often are you posting each week for the entire month? We sit down, we create all this content, and we don't even realize how much content we need for that month or week. And so you want to create within your bandwidth by having this posting plan. Another big thing, which I probably could do a whole podcast episode on, is using strategies that work for other marketers and gurus. And those strategies are only working for marketers and gurus, right? The trends, if you go through trends, it's from other marketing people, not necessarily people that are in your niche. So you want to make sure you're using strategies that actually work for your brand. And a big part of this is this trend culture, right? We see the memes, we see what's trending, what lip sync is trending on reels, and you feel like that's what's creating your strategy. But that is just one very small piece of content that isn't yielding to a bigger picture and a longer term strategy. Yes, the trends might get you views, they might get you growth, they might get you reach, but are they actually leading to a goal which might look like converting those people into customers or clients. That is kind of the problem with trends is they kind of just hit service level. They don't go deeper. So we actually see the results we want with our strategy. With all that being said, we've identified why we might be burnt out on social media, and I'm going to give you some solutions. So this can be the last time you stare burnout in the face when it comes to social media. So this is kind of my action plan for you. The first thing is to take a break. And I know this might seem like the opposite of what you think you should be doing, but I can promise you, even if you stop posting for a few weeks, your Instagram account will will not disappear. Your community will not disappear. If anything, it will make sure you're coming back with content that is intentional and strategic and leaning into how you want to move forward with the app. And taking a break will also give you the time to stockpile new content with this new system that you've set up. It'll give you the time to set up your strategy and it'll give you the space to actually analyze all of your content and see how you want to move forward with your social media strategy. And with this break, this is a really great time to stop consuming, especially if you feel like you're being influenced by what's working for everyone else in your industry or niche. Let's stop the consumption and just take a moment to rest. This also will help you reset your social media boundaries. When you take some time away, you realize, okay, do I just want to be on social media in my business hours, five days a week? Do I want to be on social media in the evenings and mornings? Do I want to be on social media on the weekends? And you can create those boundaries boundaries by being able to take that time away to rest. So a few things that you can kind of reflect on while you're taking your break is how can you create better social media boundaries, maybe muting accounts, having a scheduled day off. This also is a great time to reimagine how you want your content to feel. What do you want to be creating less of? And what do you want to be creating more of? Also, what type of content like literally do you want to create? Do you want to do more lives? Do you want to do more reels? Do you want to be more on stories? And who is that ideal follower you're wanting to create that for? And then just start prepping, start getting some content ready to go. So you kind of have some momentum to keep you going and keep you consistent. 
My five day video confidence challenge would actually be the perfect place to start. So not only will day one kind of help you source all of your stock content ideas that you'll use for the rest of the challenge. So you'll literally have weeks of content ready to go, but it gives you strategic intentional props that you can start posting that week, which is the perfect way to get back into the groove of posting after a break. So be sure to check that out at videoconfidencechallenge.com. Okay. Step two on your social media burnout plan, how to avoid it, how to get, how to get right, how to get right. We got to create this plan. This is where we want to focus on those systems and that strategy. So we have that in place. So ask yourself, do you know how often you can and want to be posting each week? Like what is your posting plan? Think about content ideation. Does it feel easy? Does it feel like you're just posting just to post? Are you excited about what you're creating? Because if the answer is no, it might mean that you need content pillars in place to help you you have that foundation and starting point for ideation and also having that place to create the content. So I already went over a few things you want to have in your content system. So start with whatever feels the easiest for you. If you love your docs, if you love pen to paper, start with that and know that you can upgrade your system as needed, but you just need to adopt something first. So some things that I like to include in a strategy that leads to long-term results is sustainable and is not in burnout land is getting really clear on your goals. Why are you using social media? What results are you trying to measure? Like what is that actual goal that you're trying to get closer to? And who is that ideal follower you're trying to connect with? Identify that ideal follower. What problems do they have? How are they consuming on social Social media? What are they looking for on social media? How can you connect with them? And what are they looking for when it comes to your content? What topics are resonating? Then you want to map out those content pillars. So I like to establish five different pillars and they're going to have a mixture of your area of expertise, maybe topics that your ideal follower would be interested in, and a few personal connection points that people can feel like they're connected to you with. This essentially will connect you with your ideal follower, but also differentiate you from other options or competitors in your industry. And then you want to end things off with your posting plan. How often are you posting? What surfaces are you using in your strategy and how are you wanting to use them? I recommend having a posting cadence for your stories. This is like the first non-negotiable I would include in your strategy. And then you want to add in other pieces of content like reels and TikToks, carousel posts, lives based on what your ideal follower might be interested in or also what do you want to create and enjoy creating. And so that is my exact remedy for beating social media burnout for good. Hopefully you're leaving this episode with a new perspective on creativity versus motivation and how you can revitalize those if you feel like they're missing. Also your permission slip that you may be needed to take a break and normalize more boundaries of how you're using social media for your brand and also leaving with a checklist so you know the exact strategies and systems you need in place to not only see results in your strategy, but to avoid avoid that cycle we talked about. So hopefully it was helpful and I'll see you in the next episode.